Sometimes investment decisions go spectacularly wrong. During the 1990s, a private company, Eurotunnel, built a channel tunnel rail link under the sea between France and the UK. And they did it on the basis of a discounted cash flow analysis undertaken during the 1980s. They estimated the costs of building it, including the trains and so on. They then estimated the number of passengers and the amount of freight that they would expect to go through the tunnel, uh, made a calculation as to the kind of revenue that they could expect to generate over a period of years following its building, discounted it all back, and came to the conclusion that this was a highly successful project. So much so that they floated some shares in 1987 at £3.50 each. And what happened? By the middle of the first decade of the 21st century, those shares were worth a few pence. What went so wrong? First of all, the costs of building the tunnel more than doubled during the period of construction. Secondly, they got the revenue forecasts hopelessly wrong. In particular, they expected the ferries to just give up and die and leave them as virtual monopolists. In fact, the ferries responded very aggressively and they built bigger, faster, more economic boats and have continued to operate and as a result still produce a large part of the cross-channel market. Why on earth you want to travel with a ferry when there's a perfectly good tunnel that would take you through uh, four times the speed. What, what are you doing here on this crossing? If I'm really honest with you... Yeah, go on, be honest. We, um, we decided to go on the ferry because it was cheaper. It's price? Yeah, yeah. it's price. When yeah. you go on the tunnel, you, you literally are in cage and it's very small, there's no shops, there's no cafeterias, you can't go and buy drinks. The ferry's nicer, it's nice to be able to go like we've done now and lean over the side and get some fresh air. Right. You, oh, can't, so you can't do that on the, yeah. on the tunnel. When you compare the price, just go for this option every time. So one of the things that Eurotunnel got wrong was imagining that they would capture the whole of the market or virtually the whole of the market. It simply hasn't happened. The competition still retains a significant share of the market and Eurotunnel's revenue projections have been shown to be hopelessly optimistic. As a result, the project spectacularly successful in an engineering sense was a financial disaster. Does that suggest that discounted cash flow techniques are useless? Well, no, it doesn't. It suggests that it's a technique which is only as valuable as the data on which it's based. Because the data was so poor and so inaccurate, the resulting financial analysis was useless. Had the forecasts been done properly, then discounted cash flow techniques would have been an enormously valuable contribution to working out how profitable the investment was likely to be.